Hello, welcome to SKR Yoga and Wellness. My name is Sam. Thank you so much for joining me on the mat today. We are going to be doing a full body energizing yin practice. So we're really gonna work the entire body from head to toe, and we're really gonna focus on poses that will help build energy. So we're gonna do a lot of twists, a lot of opening of the chest, a lot of heart openers, stretching through the spine, lots of really good stuff so that by the end of this practice, hopefully we feel rejuvenated and and energized going forward with the rest of our day. You will need quite a few props for this practice. If you don't have these props exactly, you can always just substitute with other blankets and pillows, other things you have lying around the house. Ideally, you just wanna be able to make yourself as comfortable as possible. The, po the, um, the props that I have for class today are a couple of blocks. I've also got a blanket here just for a little bit of extra cushion under the knees and also a yoga bolster. So again, use what you've got lying around the house. And I'm just gonna move my props off to the side here so we can get started. So to begin, just find yourself in a nice comfortable position and we're gonna start with a neck release to the side and I'm gonna mirror you here. So first on an inhale, just imagine yourself growing tall so your spine is getting nice and lengthened. And then on an exhale, you're gonna let your right, sh your right ear fall towards your right shoulder and really try to fully relax into this neck release here so there's no, no tension through the neck or the head whatsoever. And then to intensify it a little bit more, you're gonna walk your left fingertips out towards the left. And that should just intensify the stretch you feel, that sensation on the side of your neck. And then option here, you can take your right hand on top of your head and just gently guide that ear away from the shoulder. So rather than thinking of pushing down on the head, think of pulling away to create more space here in that stretch. It's totally optional. You can leave the hand down if you wish. And we'll be here for about another minute or so. These first couple poses we won't hold for too long. Just as a reminder for our yin yoga practice that we want to be totally passive, using minimum amount of muscle engagement as we do each of the poses here. You also wanna make sure that you're not going to your absolute maximum stretch right away, especially when we get into some of the more intense poses because we are gonna be holding them for quite a few minutes. So you wanna be at about a five or a six in resistance level when you go into your pose and then just allow gravity to do the work for you. Now to come out of this pose, because we've been in this neck release for quite a while, use your right hand just to help lift your head back to center. And we can release. Notice how one side might feel a little bit different than the other. We're gonna go ahead and do that same thing on the other side. So on an inhale, growing nice and tall. Exhale, this time your left ear to your left shoulder. Taking a breath, walking the right fingertips out. And then again, totally optional here, if you wanna add that left arm, just gently guiding your ear and your shoulder away from each other, creating space.
One of my favorite ways to breathe through a yin yoga practice is to use the ujjayi breathing technique, which is to constrict slightly the back of your throat, almost like you're trying to fog up a mirror, but you're allowing that air to exit through the nose instead of through the mouth. It creates a sound almost like waves, and it also creates a little bit of heat in the body. So I'll invite you to practice with that breathing technique as well. Otherwise, as long as you're breathing normally. And again, to come out of this posture, you're gonna use your left hand just to help guide the head back to center. Oh, feels really nice. We're gonna come into a melting heart pose or puppy pose as you would call it in vinyasa. So to get there, we're gonna come to all fours and because we're gonna be here for a while, this is where I like to use my blanket because we can just add a little bit of extra support under the knees. So coming to all fours, add that extra padding if you need it. And then from here, keep your hips at 90 degrees totally over your, um, your knees. And then you're gonna walk your hands out, melting your forehead down onto the mat. Again, breathing here. Remembering we're not going to our maximum stretch right away. You will need a slight muscle engagement just through your lower abdominals, just to protect the low back here so we're not just sinking into the spine. And then if your hips are aligned right over your knees, that'll help you to hold this pose as well. If you need, while we're here, to turn your head side to side, feel free to do that as well. We'll be here for another few minutes. Just continue to breathe, whatever way it feels good to you.
and very slowly come out of this one. Use your hands walking in to help you. Nice and easy. Coming back to all fours. I'm just going to remove the blanket from underneath me here. We're going to make our way all the way down onto your belly, coming into Sphinx pose. So we're just on our forearms here. You decide how intense you want to make this. The closer your elbows come into your body, the more intense the stretch. If you bring your elbows a little bit farther away, it lessens the intensity slightly. So totally up to you how you would like to execute this pose for yourself in today's practice. Just make sure wherever your elbows are that your shoulders are pushing down away from your ears. So that's really the only engagement that we're using through the body here. Everything else is relaxed. Maybe you want to bring back your ujjayi breath, generating that heat through the body. We'll be here in Sphinx pose for two minutes. Welcome to stay in the Sphinx Pose or progress into Seal, which means you're coming up onto your hands. This is a much more intense back bend, of course, because we're coming up a bit farther. Same rules apply with the shoulders. Keep your neck nice and long. And we're going to be here for, again, another two minutes. Of course, if at any point it feels too intense and you'd like to ease off, you can lower the elbows and come back down to Sphinx Pose. Totally up to you and what your body needs today. Just come back to your breath for another two minutes, finishing off this back bend.
from wherever you were, just softly rolling yourself back down. We're gonna send the hips back, finding a nice child's pose. For this one, I'm gonna bring my knees together here instead of having my knees apart, just so that my spine can curve a little bit easier. Totally up to you how you'd like to do your child's pose. But from wherever you are, just feel your body soften, relax. Continuing with the flow of your breath. From this child's pose, just use your hands to roll yourself back up. And we're gonna come all the way to a seated position with the legs stretched out in front. For this next pose, I'm gonna use my bolster, but any kind of cushion you have laying around will do just fine. I have my blanket over top just to add a little bit of extra cushion being extra comfortable. So we're coming into caterpillar pose. So this is just a forward fold and the cushion is of course there to soften your body forward. Um, you really wanna make sure that we're not gripping through the legs here, not going to your full extent of your stretch right away either. So first let's just find a nice tall spine. Take a nice big inhale and then on your exhale, allow yourself to fold forward. Finding a comfortable place over your bolster or your cushion. Take a moment to get comfortable, feel settled. And once you find your position, resolving to be still. So resisting the urge to fidget or move around. You can allow your legs to turn out slightly as we do this forward fold. There really shouldn't be any muscle activation whatsoever here. Your body is fully giving into gravity. It has always breathing through for the next few minutes.
and since we've been here for quite a while, use your hands to help guide your body back up to a seated position. You can move your cushion or bolster off to the side. We're gonna lower all the way down onto your back. Nice and easy. Coming into a side bend, we're going to do banana pose. So with your feet flat on the mat, you're gonna just lift your hips over towards the right side of your mat, and then you wanna curve your shoulders to the left. And then from here, you're extending your legs also out towards the left. So we're finding like a banana shape with your body. This might take a little bit longer to find. I find I always need to take a minute to kind of find the right positioning. And then from here, you can cross your right ankle over the left, or you can just keep your feet together flat on the mat. The cross will intensify your stretch a bit. And then also optional to just grab opposite elbows and bring your arms up overhead. So everybody feels this one a little bit differently. Sometimes I find from day to day, this pose can feel different. Ultimately, we're looking for a side body stretch. And you might feel this anywhere along the side of your body from the top of your right elbow all the way down to the outside of your right ankle, depending on where you're, you feel tension, where you feel tight. Again, in this posture, just totally relax, give into gravity, let it go. Coming back to your breath. To come out of this one, if your arms were up overhead, bring them back 
to your sides. If your legs were crossed, uncross them. Bring the soles of your feet back onto the floor and you're gonna straighten out your spine. And just take a moment here to evaluate how your body feels. Notice any sensations through the right side of your body. And then we'll go ahead and do that same thing on the left. So first lifting and moving the hips, shifting your upper body towards the right, and then extending your legs out, maybe crossing at the ankles if you wish. And then if you did it on the first side, you can do it again here, grabbing opposite elbows and bringing those hands up overhead. Coming back to your breath, totally relaxing. You might notice that this side feels different than the other. That's totally okay. Just resolve to be still and breathe. And once again, if your arms were overhead, bring them back to your sides, uncross your legs. Use your feet on the floor to help straighten out your body. Again, just 
notice any sensations before we continue. And for our next pose, you're gonna straighten your legs out and you're gonna roll over onto your left side. It'll just be easier for you to see me if we do this side first. So your legs are straight out, um, straight out underneath you. You're going to bend into your left leg and try to catch a hold of that foot behind you. And then from here, you're taking your right leg and extending it out in front of you, maybe grabbing a hold of your big toe with your two piece fingers to find your extension. And then you wanna take your right shoulder, opening it up towards the sky. If this toe grab is not possible for you today, you can always come up onto your elbow with your right hand. Otherwise, we're coming into this pretty big twist of the upper body. Try as best as you can to get your right shoulder on the floor so that we're anchoring the upper body and twisting really through the low to mid spine here. Might take a second to find a really firm grasp of those feet underneath you. We'll be here for about three minutes. And to come on out of this pose, you're going to release 
your toe if you were gripping your foot. Release your other foot, just coming back onto your back. And we'll stretch the legs out, going right away to the other side. So this time rolling onto your right side. This one takes a minute or so to get into. Bending into your right foot, grabbing a hold, and then grabbing your left big toe. Just gotta create some space for myself back here. And extending yourself out, really open up that left shoulder so your collarbone is reaching towards the sky. Take as long as you need to get comfortable, and then once you do, being still. We'll take another three minutes on this side here. just like we did on the first side, releasing your top leg first, bottom leg second before we unwind. Coming back onto your back, let's just stretch out the legs, notice any sensations through the body. And for our next posture, I'm going to come into snail or 
plow pose, um, which is what you would call it in vinyasa. If this feels a little bit too intense for you, you can always come out and bring yourself into a supported bridge like I am doing here with the block on whatever height feels most comfortable for you. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and lift our hips up. I'm just going to recenter myself on the mat. Lifting on up. Use your hands walking down your back. You want to try and lift your hips up as high as they'll go here. And once you feel comfortable, just extending your legs up behind you. It's okay if they don't quite touch to the floor. Again, we're trying to be passive here. We're allowing gravity to do the work. Take a couple minutes here, and if at any point it feels too intense, you can always roll on out nice and slow. Make sure you roll out of this really, really slowly. You can bend your knees, use your hands to help guide your hips back down. Rolling out. And we're right away gonna reverse that action of the spine. And you will need either a bolster or two blocks for this next one. I'm gonna use my blocks. We're coming into supported fish. So you want the first block to be parallel to the long edge of your mat, the second block to be parallel to the short edge of your mat. And when you lower yourself down, you want this long block here to rest right in between the shoulder blades. So take a moment to find that position for yourself. And I like to do this with a light hip opener. So bringing the soles of the feet together, allow the knees to just fall out to the side. Arms are also out to the side, palms up. And as always, being still and breathing deep, we shouldn't need any muscle activation here. We're totally giving into gravity, just melting over the blocks. So really letting go.
to come out of this one, you'll want to tuck your chin to your chest first, release that first block, and then come up onto your elbows to release the second. We are actually going to need one more block for our final pose before Shavasana. Um, you have an option here to do this against a wall, um, and you may decide that you don't want to use the block. This is totally up to you. Basically, we're coming up to legs up the wall, so we're doing a slight inversion here. So just reversing the blood flow, which really definitely helps with energy. And you can kind of shake out your legs a little bit just before we get settled. Of course, if you do have a wall handy, you can always pause the video and go get yourself set up in that new position. From this legs up the wall, we are gonna go directly into Shavasana. So we'll be here for two minutes and then into our Shavasana. So make sure that you're comfortable. Your mat is with you. Those legs above you are fully relaxed. So we're not engaging through the legs whatsoever or the feet. And I love in this pose to really just focus in on the sensation that you feel through the legs, reversing that blood flow. This is an, a very restorative pose. Sometimes I feel that doing this pose just for five minutes is even better than taking a 20 minute nap, for example. It's very, very energizing for your body. So we'll take another minute here just to enjoy this release. from here just bend your legs back down release the block from underneath you coming directly into Shavasana get comfortable take up lots and lots of space we'll be here for about three minutes really just try to observe the effects of your practice on your body especially for your spine. We did a couple intense twists and side body stretches. So how does that make you feel? And try to feel that as we continue breathing on each and every exhale, we're just allowing the body to give way into gravity more and more. So each exhale is a new moment for release into the ground.
And this is where I will leave you here in Shavasana. Feel free to rest here for longer if you wish. Just before you go, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And hopefully I'll see you on the mat again very soon. Namaste.